I'm Chris. Uh, I'll be talking a bit about Microsoft. <clears throat> so what is it? Um, it is a snap, and I know some people are a bit leery about snaps from Canonical. Um, it's a clustering daemon. Uh, uses uh, DQ Lite, which is a SQL Lite compatible. That works too. Uh, it's a SQL Lite compatible uh, database using Raft for consensus. Uh, that management daemon uh, allows us to build a cluster of arbitrary nodes. We then use it to manage the placement of all of the various F daemons you guys are all aware of. Monitors, managers, OSDs, the metadata servers, he said almost. Podium, but he's over. Sorry, what was that? Oh. Right. The, almost the uh, Rados gateways. It's in progress now. Um, it's really opinionated about what you put where. That's likely to change soon, but for now, it does what it does and you get Ceph. Um, <clears throat> so why did we do that? Uh, a couple of different use cases. We really wanted to support a single node intro to Ceph. You can run this on your laptop. It runs as a strictly confined snap, which means it doesn't have full root on your system. It has very, very limited access to things. You have to give it permissions to do things. Uh, it's kind of like having your phone running Ceph instead of the server. Um, in addition to that, we really wanted to be able to run small edge clusters, deploying thousands of them instead of, you know, or thousands of very small clusters rather than a few big ones. You know, we all like talking about petabyte scale clusters, but we kind of like some small terabyte scale clusters too. Uh, we wanted it to be quick to deploy, very predictable, and um, <clears throat> you know, the idea being that your average deployer isn't actually a Ceph expert. Uh, you know, think the 7-Eleven, you know, someone who's the assistant manager can actually go in, take their little tiny rack in the back of a few nooks and run Ceph on it. Uh, this lets them do whatever they want to do with Ceph instead of having to hope that they can find storage somewhere. Uh, there's almost no infra overhead. Uh, that clustering daemon is very minimal. It's a little Go daemon. Apparently we're all fans of Go now, so yay. Um, <clears throat> and it really needed to be repeatable. You can, you know, script it fairly easily. Get all of this. Uh, we're actually going to have a demo, hopefully now. The guys in the back are going to hook me up uh, as we're going to actually do a Ceph deploy in about three and a half, four minutes. Maybe. <laughs> Yay. Sorry, I can't actually zoom it in, but hopefully it's all legible. Uh, all I've done to prepare the system is to install this snap. Uh, it's that Microsoft one, the fourth one down. We bootstrap a cluster. This is setting up that clustering daemon, uh, getting it ready with DQ Lite and things uh, pretty quick. Doesn't actually do much, so I'm cheating a little. Uh, we tell it to add some nodes. I've actually got four machines here to play with. We get a little token. That token has all the data you need to add these nodes into this cluster. And we're going to hopefully go over to the next tab and add a couple more of them. These will be my first three nodes, running manager and monitors and the MDS servers, actually. It's a little bit slower as it's actually syncing state, doing things with Raft and fun clustery magic. We can do them concurrently. There's nothing that stops us from doing that. Uh, at the end of this, we actually will have a Ceph cluster with no storage, which is, you know, not that interesting, but it's a nice first step. I do have this one set up to install the Redos Gateway. I mentioned it's in progress. There is actually code in place to do it. We're working on all being happy with it, you know, deciding that we like what it's doing and how it's doing it. OK, so we can get our Ceph status. You might notice that Microsoft.Ceph status, it is confined. You're not running this as you on the system. You're not running it as a Ceph user or root. But inside that confined space, you have your monitor, managers, et cetera, but no disks. So let's add some disks. I did run into a slightly annoying bug that made me not want to do it concurrently in this demo. Sorry, it takes it a little bit longer, but we're going to get our one OSD showing up shortly. You might notice that the adding the disk doesn't actually add it into Ceph in a blocking fashion, which is exciting. Some of the, the clustering work is actually around um, letting us manage demons and everything in a central fashion. So you could say, OK, add that OSD from that machine over there. Uh, you know, put a monitor over there, put a Redos gateway over there. 
So we actually should have shortly three OSDs up and in. Let's go and enable a Redos gateway, I believe is up next. So this one will be fun. The next demo is actually playing with Redos Gateway just a little bit in a slightly smaller version, but the same concept. So you'll have you'll take this and be able to see from the other one a nice handing off point. So hey, we have that. All right, I think we're on the next demo, which is actually of that Redos Gateway that we just set up. Again, pretty minimal setup, pretty quick and easy. All right, so similar setup. It's a slightly smaller one, but it still, you know, suffices to let us play with the Redos gateway. I did accelerate this one a little. I didn't feel like taking five minutes to demo uh, a little bit of S3 playing with. Um, so again, we have, you know, no data in there in the pools. We set up Redos gateway. Uh, and there's actually config on here to do um, then S3 commands. You can see that there's a Redos gateway running there on this node. It's not in a container or any of that. It's uh, bound by Linux namespacing, though, nonetheless. OK, so we've uh, not got a user. We're going to add a user. I believe that's what we're doing next. And then creating a bucket and writing and reading an object. Slightly safer than a live demo, but unfortunately means a bit of waiting occasionally. So then we've created our user. And the credentials should actually be set up in the S3 command now. That does that part. All right, so we've uh, listed things, added a bucket. Oh, hey, the bucket exists now. Yay. Let's write to it and then read from it to make sure it actually works. Let that be. All right. OK, so what's next? Uh, before we're happy to call this anything like something you should play with, you can today, please do. Uh, we want automated encryption. Uh, so very easy, like seamless to a user encryption of the OSDs. Uh, you need to actually build a configure network instead of we tell you what to do. And we're going to be doing stuff upgrades. So point releases and major upgrades in a very automated, easy to use fashion that does just work. It doesn't eat your data. Uh, it is very much a new thing. We've been working on it now for about six months. Uh, please try it out. Tell us what you think. Uh, tell us what doesn't work. Tell us what works. Uh, kind of all there's on feedback. Uh, how can you try it out? Microsoft.com. It is on GitHub as well. Canonical slash Microsoft. Questions? Hello. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, how, how does it actually deploy Ceph? What what's it? What, is there what method? What, what's it using? Uh, so the the daemon that it's running is a little management daemon that so the snap ships with all of the Ceph bits. It's the Ubuntu packages for Ceph. Uh, when you say you know the first three that start, go okay. I don't have enough monitors. Start a monitor, and it just runs that locally. It knows what the whole cluster state is. It knows what disks are added to what machines next to Ceph. Which I'm a little annoyed about that design choice, but we'll come back to that. Um, it, so it's so its own it, deployment. Um, yeah, so yeah, it, it has its own deployment. Yeah, it has logic. nothing else. Yeah, it cool. Today. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Actually, I wish I had this four days ago. Then I wouldn't have had to use this cluster. <laughs> I was like, if only there was some packaged Microsoft thing I could use. I thought about using the um, what's the in the Ceph source code. There's one of the make things like Quick Start or something. But that's a yeah, yeah. But that's a nightmare. Yeah. So, so, so I didn't. on your laptop, just a, a fun tidbit, it doesn't use LVM. It actually even uses the direct block device. Uh, it's a little easier to constrain that properly. Like doing LVM on a host is difficult to correctly constrain. So it's kind of fun one there. Hey, 
Have you ever tried to create Microsoft uh, deployments and then have them talk to each other? No. Okay. Um, I was just curious. That said, we've done a lot of things <laughs> elsewhere in you know our playing with stuff with uh, you know mirroring gateways, mirroring RBD volumes. So it really wouldn't surprise me if that's on the menu fairly quickly. Sure. Yeah. Actually, um, so in CBT, it will will like deploy stuff into temp. And we can do like, you know, big cluster deployments, like, uh, you know, kind of like a, a real deployment, but not really. Uh, but I'm super curious with something like this, if you could kind of uh, do a single machine deployment and then extend it, it'd be, it'd be cool to see. So one of the things that we're uh, looking at is really well supporting that single machine use case and then fairly seamlessly scaling up. So, you know, you're playing with it on your laptop, you've got some stuff is fundamentally the same experience as I'm on a server in a data center doing the whole rack at once, right? So it really shouldn't be a different experience. And you should be able to go from one to the other, even though you probably shouldn't go from your laptop to a data center. Thanks. All right, thank you everyone.